Thank you for tuning in to another After Effects Tech Desk video. Today we're going to talk about the wiggle expression. The wiggle expression is, I think, the first place that a lot of After Effects start to play around with expressions, and that's for a good reason. It's very simple and quite powerful. There are some tips that uh, you can use to get more out of it and get some more control, so I thought I'd make a little video about how to do that. So we're going to make a new composition. Mine's 1080p at 24 frames a second, but it doesn't really matter what it, yours is. And I'm going to start by creating a new shape layer. We'll just make this a 500 by 500 pixel box. And if we hit P to twirl down position, I'll click on that. The wiggle expression looks something like this format. So it has two values inside the parentheses. You have the frequency and then the amount. Now, you could just put a number in there, like two and say 20, and that would wiggle around. Um, I like to split out these variables to get a little bit more control over it. So I'm going to make a new one called f, and we'll, call, we'll set that to what we have, f equals 2, and we'll say a equals 100, and we'll just go ahead and change these to f and a. Something is not working here. Oh, I forgot a comma there, so you can kind of see how to debug. All right, now this is moving around. And if we change this to be a thousand, works better if we ran preview this. So you can see how much that wiggles around. And if we say change that to 10, it's going to wiggle just a tiny little bit. And if we change the frequency, that's how much it's going to do it per second. So you get more of a jitter there. Okay, so the first thing I would think about doing to give us a little bit more control over this, I'll drag this out. And if we look under expression controls, we can tie these two values to sliders. So we'll drag a slider on there, say frequency, amount, We'll put in 20 and 10, and then just link those together by highlighting this text using the pick whip and dragging it over there. And then I hit enter to get out of that. Enter on my number pad. I think enter on your regular keyboard side uh, will <clears throat> do a carriage return. I think we'll do a carriage return. So. Uh, just be aware of that. So, okay, where are we going to drag that there? And now we're all linked up. And now, when this is ramp previewing, you can actually change this on the fly. So now we can see how, what's that, what that is doing to it. But you can see it's wiggling this the same amount. So one of the most common questions is, how do you make this wiggle on just one axis? So, okay, I'm going to stop this for a second, and um, for a second I'm going to duplicate this just so that we can keep that. I'm going to look at, hit P on here. I'm going to hit Alt-click to remove the expression, so we have no expression on here. So the easiest thing to do for this would be separate dimensions, and then you would just add your wiggle whichever dimension you want and you could even say set that to a different one and change up add some sliders there but sometimes you don't really want to um, have these separated you know that makes that can make for double keyframes and make it really hard to animate sometimes so that's not always a real viable option 
So I'm going to turn this one back on. And if we go back to just twirling down our expression here, what we can do is set this wiggle also to a variable. So I'm going to call that variable that wiggle w. <clears throat> and if we were to write out this position here <clears throat> inside, if we were to write out this position here inside of the array bracket, it would look something like value bracket zero, value bracket one. And all that would do then, it's we're not calling the wiggle anymore. We've set it, but we're just taking the value from here and the value from here. So if we want to wiggle that, we actually, instead of typing value, just put your variable there. And now that wiggles it right on set, right on the one. dimension that you've applied it to. So if we undo that, and put it on here. See, sometimes this context can get a little tricky. You might just have to click out of it. But you can see that there it is wiggling just on that Y value now. OK, so one last thing that you might want to do is maybe separate these so you might have frequency x amount x and and we'll copy this and we'll call that f y a y and w y we'll duplicate those this will be free. frequency y, frequency amount y. And now here, if we put that into the name here, and you can see when you click on that, it actually comes up. OK, you could also hit escape to get out of there. So now we have W, let's put W here, because that's our wiggle on that one, and then WY on this one. Hit escape. Oh, but that did not accept my changes. See, this still says that there. So that's why that's not working. WY. Now, you can see how you can get this interesting movement. And you know, this frequency, when you pump it up over anything about three or four, it starts to get real jittery. But you can see how much you can kind of play around with this interesting movement just by having these sliders and the longer you let it play out you know the more chance for variation and then the other thing that you can do to make this a little bit more interesting because eventually if you let this go long enough it will kind of follow a pattern you could start to put a wiggle on the actual amount well, and we'll just say, let's do that that much. You could tie that to sliders again, but you know, at some point there is sort of a <clears throat> diminishing returns. You have to think about how much you're trying to really do that. So you can see how much that's going to change it over time. At some point it's wiggling 400. You know, maybe we want to actually pump that up quite a bit more so that it's even more randomized. So you can wiggle the wiggle. Kind of don't want to animate the frequency too much. That's something that is kind of uh, might not work real well against you. 
uh, that is something that might work against you a little bit. It kind of gets a little bit weird. But uh, you can definitely animate the amount by using this slider so that it ends up slowing it down. Which could be interesting if it was bouncing all over and then all of a sudden it's just kind of going up and down there. So something is not quite right here. Aha, uh -huh. and you can see, I could figure out that that was not doing what I expected it to. So something must, it, the expression isn't broken, but it's still not behaving properly. And I can see here that I did not define this correctly. I have this the same in here. So now, I think we'll see, no, we will not see that. Oh, okay, Could, because in here, it's still looking at the X amounts, so they're looking at the same. So now we see it slows down there and then just goes side to side. And if you pump that up a whole bunch, There you go. I think that's uh, pretty much it that I have to share about expressions. Um, you can definitely expand on this, but I think you know these are kind of the basic concepts that I go through in a lot of my videos where we separate out the expressions into different variables and um, start off with a simple syntax that we start to link and uh, expand upon. So. Hope you enjoyed this. If you have any questions, uh, please feel free to put them in the comments and I will definitely respond to them as quickly as I can. And if you have any ideas for future videos or topics that you'd like me to cover, then please also suggest those. And of course, like and subscribe and hope to see you next time. Thanks.